Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Grumman Pilot's YouTube channel. And this morning we want to talk about the top of your rudder cap. Now, this is for those of you who have the red jelly jar flashing beacon that sits on top. Now, you'll notice that we don't have the uh, flashing beacon assembly up here, but we're going we're gonna to show how to put all that together right now. So, take the jelly jar and move it aside for a second. In the top of the rudder cap, what we have is this fixture. Now, in this fixture is a bulb, which is our flashing beacon bulb that we all know and love, how much fun it is to keep working. But we're going to take the bulb out of here. By the way, if you go to Aircraft Bruce, this is a T14 for 14 volts, 125W for 125 watts. It's a fairly bright bulb and generates quite a bit of heat, and that's why it puts quite a bit of stress on the 10 amp circuit it's on because the flasher itself draws about 11 amps under peak. But when you look at your installation of your jelly jar, uh, it's nothing more than two bolts, 5 eighths inches long, and they capture this plate and the wires which go through the hole in the top of the uh, rudder tip and then this plate here comes up from the bottom you line up the holes you put it all back together and this will complete the uh, base of the rotating beacon now once you have the rotating beacon you have three more pieces you have well, four actually you have the retaining ring and its screw you have the gasket and it goes together as follows the gasket goes here, the jelly jar goes on top of it carefully, keeping the gasket all aligned, and then you take the screw out and you start it in the slot and you run it around, and then when you go tighten it, you'll, you'll notice it's kind of spring-loaded. So you'll want to put a little bit of pressure here, closing it by hand, or you can get a pair of uh, die tip, but you want to be very careful of these two spot welds because if they break loose then you don't have a rotating beacon top anymore. Um, and then insert the screw and get it started because trust me if you don't put some tension there and you go to start the screw and you let it go that screw is going to jump over your shoulder past the ladder and be on the ramp somewhere and you're going to be looking for it. So. Just be careful with that, but uh, it all it just comes out very easily, the screw. Actually, I find it goes together a lot quicker if you leave the retaining ring on the top section and then go to install the jelly jar. That just works out a lot better. And there you see we have captured our jelly jar and we are now ready to put tensioning whoops it's not quite on there yet now it is it's completely on there and now we can install the screw trust me it's a lot easier here uh, in the studio than it is on a real airplane but that's your assembly of your jelly jar it sits upon the top of that and these wires go to the flasher which drives it. Again, it's a 10 amp circuit which draws almost 11 amps. So your flashing beacon, this is the entire assembly sands the bulb. I'm being very careful of those bulbs because they are fairly expensive. But this is how you put your jelly jar together for your Grumman on any of the airplanes up through the AG-5B. Uh, doesn't apply to the Cougar, but it applies to all the two and four place like Grumman's. So we hope you found this information useful and informative. I'd like to thank you for watching Grumman Pilot's YouTube channel, and have a good day flying your Grumman.